in high definition. This is Central Coast News right now. These starfish are wasting away, literally. A mystery disease is killing starfish up and down the California coastline. It's eating them from the inside out. And now these starfish are losing limbs in the process. It's being called starfish wasting disease. Central Coast researchers say it starts with lesions on their limbs and causes these sea stars to basically disintegrate. I'm Jazz, this is Mark. Well, this is being found as far north as Alaska and as far south as Southern California. But right now, little is known about the disease and what's causing it, and more importantly, how to stop it. It is new information to the story that we first told you about last night on the news at 10 p.m. Central Coast News reporter Cassandra Arsenal spoke to those with UCSC to check in with this group that's studying the deadly disease. Cassie? Now, Mark, these starfish you see behind me are the starfish UC Santa Cruz students found today on their dive. Two things they do know about this mysterious disease is it is bacterial and it can move between species, especially through open wounds. But this program is feverishly studying how they can stop the spread because it's spreading fast and they're hoping this doesn't start wiping out the starfish population. It just looks like a graveyard out there. You go diving and there's just arms scattered everywhere. Some are just one arm sea stars, some two, three. The Central Coast has thousands of different species of starfish lining their shorelines, but recently the UCSD evolutionary biology students noticed in their weekly dives dead starfish that looked like their limbs had been chopped off. Their tissues are just degrading, so they turn not into mush, but they slowly are disintegrating away and those arms are getting shorter and shorter and eventually falling off. These students and researchers don't know much about the disease yet, but they have seen a similar disease in other sea life. They're comparing population counts of starfish to a count of the diseased starfish right now. To see what the population, how it has been changing, and if it really is wiping out this population or not. But losing starfish could seriously disrupt the circle of life in the nationally protected marine sanctuary, as well as up and down the California coastline. Because this could have major top-down effects, because sea stars are major predators. They have been known to eat a lot of snails, and snails tend to eat kelp. And if there just is this huge boom in the snail population due to the less sea stars, then that could totally wipe out our kelp forest. Because the disease is running rampant, they're trying to find an answer as fast as they can to stop any detrimental effect on these sea stars. They said the best way to stop this bacterial disease is to study it as best they can to find the source and then hopefully a solution. In the newsroom, I'm Cassandra Arsenal, your Central Coast News. All right, getting to more local news here tonight. A Prunedale father is accused of kidnapping his two-year-old toddler this morning after a domestic dispute. This is video of Jose Guzman being arrested in Watsonville, the very end of it all after deputies say he took off in his car with the toddler from his Prunedale home. Deputies say the suspect told the child's mother that he was going to hurt the child. According to deputies, the suspect may be bipolar and not taking his medication. We have California covered today. The Obama administration official who oversaw the launch of the federal health care website answered questions from lawmakers. The Center of Medicare and Medicaid Services is run by Marilyn Tavener, and today was her second trip to Capitol Hill since the troubled launch of healthcare.gov. According to CBS News, a final security test was never performed before the site went online. However, Tavener told lawmakers the area containing personal information did get tested. We had taken additional steps to make sure that an individual application was secure. But at least one application was not secure. A South Carolina couple registered on the website, but their eligibility letters containing private information, those were sent to a man in North Carolina. Tavener says the mix-up was a software glitch, and that has been fixed. And now a private health foundation is turning to Hollywood to improve the struggling image of the Affordable Health Care Act. Well, this is pretty interesting. The California Endowment is giving a $500,000 grant to be spent behind the scenes. Think about it. How many shows do we watch that include hospitals, health care, or even storylines that follow the all-American family? Well, this 
That's where the money comes in. It will help educate the people working for our favorite TV shows about the Affordable Care Act and what it means for you at home. However, there's no creative control, uh, so don't expect any blatant product placement, Mark. So the question is, what can we expect to see? I'm joined now by Jason Huff, an instructor of communications at Hartnell College in Salinas. So the goal here is to have citizens enroll in the ACA. Uh, basically, first off, your thoughts of using primetime television to do that. Well, there's a long history of being able to influence, whether it's public opinion, whether it's policy, through TV content and through TV programming. So I'm not surprised to hear this is taking place. So this has been done before with other industries. You know, I say it's like lobbying just with Hollywood. So talk to that. I mean, this is across the board, right? Sure. And I think that what's unique about this is that Hello. you see a nonprofit that is involved in this endeavor. But this is something that for profit organizations have used quite effectively for some time. Everything from lobbying, as you mentioned, to product placement. Now, will it work? I mean, can America be influenced by something they see on Grey's Anatomy? Sure, absolutely. It's almost been 50 years ago, one of the giants in our field, Marshall McLuhan, he said that the medium is the message, meaning that not just the message, but how the message is delivered can have an impact. And we've seen that, for example, in the 90s, television shows that had gay characters. And there have been research studies that have shown that that's actually influenced public opinion more favorably towards that particular topic. And on a weekly basis, you're talking with your students about how to get that information out there, whatever means it may be, but you know, media is huge, of course. Yeah, absolutely, and I think that in this particular case, what will happen is if this money is spent in such a way where it, there's a spin to where the um, Affordable Care Act is positive and the writers pick up on that, then you could see a character on a television show signing up for the Affordable Care Act and it being a positive experience that is given to the audience. That's what they're hoping for. All right, Jason Huff, uh, Hartnell College, thanks for coming. I appreciate it. Sure, thank you. All right, and now this story. More than 115,000 Californians with individual plans through Blue Shield of California have more time to extend their coverage. This after California's insurance commissioner did not like what he was seeing. Blue Shield is giving those policyholders a three-month reprieve to allow more time to select insurance through the health exchange. Blue Shield had sent notices to policyholders saying that their plans would be withdrawn from the market and replaced with new compliant policies. But Insurance Commissioner Dave Jones said the cancellations required a six-month warning. And what I will continue to do as insurance commissioner is make sure the law is complied with and consumers are protected. And in this case, that means people should have been given additional notice. Now we've given them the chance to have additional notice and the chance to stay in their current policies if they so choose. Well, today, a consumer watchdog group is calling on all health insurers to delay the cancellation of policies for 90 days. To learn more about the Affordable Care Act covered California and its impact on you and your family, just visit KIONRightNow.com slash healthcare. All right, now to this developing story. A mall in New Jersey remained closed today after a gunman opened fire just before closing last night. We've been following and monitoring this story all day coming in from the feeds as authorities say the suspect was found overnight dead from a self-inflicted gunshot wound. The family of 20-year-old Richard Shoup says he was on a suicide mission and didn't hurt anyone else when he started shooting inside New Jersey's largest shopping mall. Six gunshots were fired there at the Garden State Plaza. Out of nowhere, the guy walks right past the front door and he's like just shooting, fire, um, shooting shots in the air. I mean, how frightening for these folks. Some employees and customers ran for their lives. Others hid for hours until SWAT teams helped them evacuate. Authorities say Shoup had a history of drug dealing and drug abuse. Also, prosecutors are saying that Shoup left a letter at his New Jersey home where he referenced his depression and said that he thought the end was coming. And of course, Mark, this follows Friday's deadly shooting at the airport in Los Angeles. All right, Jazz, on to campaign 2013. Today is our special election day, and right now, less than three hours until the polls close, we have several issues across the Central Coast, including who will fill Jose Castaneda's school board seat in Salinas, a possible tax increase for Scotts Valley, and what to do with future development on the former Fort Ord. That's a big one. Last month, we brought you an instant debate with supporters of Measure M and Measure K. Here right now is a portion of that debate. 
This one coming in from Judy Schur saying, well, she calls both measures a bit confusing, wanting to sort things out before Election Day. She says no matter what I read on both issues, I'm still not sure how to vote. So Judy says, can someone just be honest and say what will really happen if yes on M passes and what will happen if yes on K passes? So Jason, let's start with you. The basics. If it passes, what's next? Well, thank you. Uh, if the yes on, yes on M is successful, what we will look forward to is preserving 540 acres of the former Fort Ord for open space and recreation. It's a designation that doesn't eliminate all development, so we'll still be allowed to develop, but it's in the vein of recreational purposes. So it will actually um, prevent intensive use, such as the uh, proposed Monterey Downs development on, the, on a lot of that property. And what it really does is allow the public to continue to access and use the properties like we have been using them for the last 20 years. Phyllis Muir, yes on a K. If it passes, what's next? This measure, uh, both measures, affect Parker Flats, an area of Old Fort Ord that from the beginning when the 1997 base reuse plan was adopted was always, always identified as an area for economic revitalization and job creation. I think it's important for everyone who's trying to figure out how to vote to realize that there are 21,000 acres out of the 28,000 total at Fort Ord that are permanent open space. That includes the National Monument, the dunes at the beach, and various other open space areas. So we have over two-thirds of the area already permanent open space. And that won't be touched? That will not be touched. This is all about Parker Flats area, which in total is about 1,100 acres. And this, these two measures have different approaches to what do we do with Parker Flats. Measure K says keep the plan that was adopted by all the surrounding communities in 1997 and make it available for economic revitalization and job creation. The goal was to create 18,000 jobs at Fort Ord. We have created about 4,000. We've got a long way to go. And again, that is just a portion of the Measure M and Measure K debate that we had in our studio last month. For more on that and for all the issues being brought, being brought to the polls tonight, just visit KIONRightNow.com. And remember, the polls closing tonight at 8. We got our voted sticker today. Mark and I drove by, dropped off the ballot. It's that easy. To your Central Coast economy here, another Made in Monterey County movie has hit theaters. And we are not just talking about the money being pulled in at the box office. While the film Big Sur has not released how much it made on its opening weekend, the Film Commission in Monterey County estimates more than $83 million has come into this economy from these productions since it was established in 1987. Medium sized uh, feature or a large commercial can leave 30, 50, even $100,000 a day in the local community, just depending on the size of the crew and the amount of hotel rooms they need and, uh, you know, the, just the scale of the shoot. The movie Big Sur is based on the novel and stars Jean Mark Barr and Kate Bo Bosworth. Those big stars are in it. The film also, or rather almost, was not made in Big Sur because remember, Highway 1 was washed out in a rock slide. But luckily, they filmed up in the Bay Area first, then came back down here to our area because it was all cleaned up in time for production. We love this time. During these tough economic times, our goal is to help teachers teach by giving them the supplies they need in the classroom. So we've teamed up with Block Construction for another school year to choose a teacher every month and provide that $500 check for a classroom makeover. Here we are again, this time at San Vicente Elementary School in Soledad, about to go surprise Mrs. Rosario Sandoval's third grade class. That's her classroom. Let's go. Let's go. We're looking for Mrs. Rosario Sandoval. I think you're going to be surprised. I am surprised. For a $500 oh. classroom makeover. Oh my goodness. I didn't expect it. <laughs> you were nominated by a parent. Really? Wow, I am so shocked. I can see the surprise on everyone's face right now. We are so excited to do this. You've been teaching how many years? I've been teaching for 18 years now. 
18 yes. years and nominated by a parent who said that you make their child's life so much better. She's excited to learn. Oh, my goodness. And I'm sur sure all of you, too, right? How exciting is this? This is to help Are you we learn. Excited, boys and girls? Books, crayons, pens. So to nominate a teacher for that classroom makeover, just go to our website, fill out the form. That's KIONRightNow.com and click on classroom makeover. Scientists plan to study 70 sites burned by the rim fire by using birds. We go down to earth plus this story. Yes, I have some old crack cocaine. No, oh, a mayor under fire for illegal drug use while in office. Will he step down? More coming up. This is Central Coast News, now in high definition.